One of the most important things to learn when working with Redshift is layering different elements in order to create more complex materials. It's nothing too difficult, but if you're just starting out with nodes, it can be a little bit intimidating. So hopefully this video is going to help with that. We're going to go through the most important nodes needed for this sort of work, and we're going to build some basic materials that will give us a better understanding of how layering works. Let's go! The materials of this scene use three different types of nodes. The color layer node, the color splitter, and finally the color correct node. With these nodes alone we can fine tune and get all the different styles seen on the pool balls. We can certainly build the materials with just a simple texture, but using nodes gives us a lot more flexibility. For one, we don't have to export multiple textures for all the different colors or designs we might need. With a nodal setup, everything can be adjusted. So if we want to change a color, for example, we can do it easily by going to the right option and adjusting it. The same applies for the designs on the balls or the color of the text. As you can see, with nodes we have a lot more flexibility when it comes to making big changes. So let's see how we can set things up. And let's start simple. Let's focus on one single ball. I'll disable all the other ones, and I will group everything else together so nothing's on the way. Perfect. The building block for layered materials is the color layer node. Let's create a new redshift material, and before we bring in the color layer node, let's make some minor adjustments. Let's use the new redshift node. So I'm going to double click on the empty area and type in standard material. We can delete the older node and connect the new one to the surface input. This redshift material follows Autodesk's initiative for a more standardized material between renderers, so it's good practice to start using that in our scenes. Now, let's bring in the color layer node. At a first glance, it's a little bit intimidating, but think of this node as a PSD file built with layers. There's the base layer at the bottom, then layer 1 on top of that, layer 2 on top of the base layer in layer 1, and so on and so forth. So we can assign a color on the base layer, and then we can enable layer 1 and give it another color. Because layer 1 is on top, we cannot see the red color anymore. But there's ways to affect that. For example, if we reduce the mass capacity to half, then 50% of the base layer and 50% of layer 1 will be visible. And that's why we get the color purple. We can also use a mask, similar to how we would use a layer mask in Photoshop. So let's bring in a gradient, make a couple of adjustments, and connect it to the mask input of layer 1. And now the gradient controls how the colors will show up. And that's exactly how we're going to build our materials. We're going to use masks for all the different design elements. Let's have a look at a render to decipher all the masks and elements we will need. I see three in total. This rectangular form in the middle of the ball, the circle where the number is on, and finally the text for the numbers on the balls. I created all the necessary shapes in Illustrator, but you can use whatever program you have available. Here's the rectangular form, the circular one, and finally the editable text for the numbers. Here I have the shapes colored just so it's easier to see, but we actually don't need any color information. We're going to use these shapes as masks. The reason I have the rectangle and circle as separate masks and not as one rectangular shape with a cutout in the middle is because the shapes on the billiard balls are quite varied. Some of them have only the circular form in the middle, and others combine the two. So having the shapes as separate files is going to give us maximum flexibility. I've exported everything as PNGs, so it's easier to take advantage of the file's transparency. Now let's see how we're going to combine all these elements together. Let's recreate the design of the 10 ball. This one uses the rectangular and circular form, so if we just connect the rectangular form to the mask of layer 1, we're not going to get the result we want. We need to somehow combine the circle and the rectangle in one shape before we connect that into layer 1's mask. And we're going to do that with another color layer node. So I'm going to connect the rectangular form to the base layer, 
and then the circle to the mask of layer 1. As you can see in the preview, we finally have the shape we want. All that's left now to do is to connect the output of this layer node to the mask of the other color layer node. So far so good, but notice the small issue we're having. Our mask doesn't have the feathered edges we exported from Illustrator. If you recall, the shapes in Illustrator had a small blur, so that means that the alpha mask is not being read correctly. And to fix that, we're going to use another node called Splitter node. With this one, we can split the image into different components, the RGB values and the alpha. So now, instead of connecting the rectangular mask to the base layer, we're going to connect it to the splitter node first, and then connect that to the base layer. And here's our blurry edges. Let's do the same for the circular shape. Perfect. All that's left now is to change the color of our ball to white, and connect the number image to the color input of layer 2, and of course enable the layer. Our 10 ball is ready. Let's say now that we would like to change the color of the number 10. Instead of exporting another image from Illustrator with the color we need, we can just connect things differently in our nodal setup. Instead of connecting the image to the color input, we're gonna plug it into the mask input. But we need a color split node for that. And now we can pick whatever color we need and things will change accordingly. As you can see, it's nothing really too complex to set up. Everything can be done with a few layer and color splitter nodes. So, let's say now that we want to create the material of ball number 1. It's not that much different than what we already have, we just have to shuffle a couple of things around. The number 1 ball doesn't have the rectangular form, so our node setup is much simpler. We only have to connect the circular mask to the mask of layer 1, and then delete the rest. The remaining thing left is to replace the number used, and that's it. We can now just play around with the colors until we have the ones we want. Perfect. There's one more thing I would like to show you, and that's the color correct node. This one is perfect when we have to adjust an image. Let me show you why this node is great. As you can see from the original number one ball, it has some wear marks. This is just a simple texture applied on the mask of another layer. So, let's build it. I'm gonna connect the texture to the mask of layer 3, enable it, and give the layer a white color. Currently, the effect is a bit too heavy. The reason for that is because the texture has a lot of white areas, so the majority of the color of layer 3 will show through. That's where the color correct node comes in. It will allow us to control the black and white areas of our image in a more precise manner. So, let's bring in the color correct node and see it in action. As we increase the contrast, we increase the areas of black. Because our image now has more black areas, we will see less of layer 3. The contrast increase will also make all the edges harder, so there will be less gradation between black and white. Another great option is the ability to adjust the gamma value. So we can lower the gamma value, for example, and make the image darker. And then we could punch up the contrast and get just a tiny bit of wear and tear on the ball. We can get a ton of different looks just by adjusting the gamma and contrast values of the image. And that's the gist of it. All other bowls are created with the same principles. Some have fewer or more nodes, but they're all made with the same three nodes. The color layer, the color splitter, and the color correct node. As you can see, creating complex looking materials is not really that difficult. These three nodes can get us a long way, so if you haven't experimented with them yet, I would highly suggest you do so. You will not only have a lot of fun, but your renders will go to that extra next level. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and also let me know if there's something specific in Redshift you would like to see me cover. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.